The masses of people are carried along, obedient to environment, the wills and desires of others stronger than themselves. Heredity, suggestion, and other outward causes moving them about like pawns on the chessboard of life. But the masters, rising to the plane above, dominate their moods, character, qualities, and powers, as well as the environment surrounding them, and become movers instead of pawns. The Kibalion. Greetings, mortals. I'm your host, Simon. Welcome back to the Library of Noses. The Kibalion is a grimoire written by someone under the pseudonym of the Three Initiates, or Thrice Reborn. The Greeks related the Egyptian god Thoth to their god Hermes, due to his similar attributes and functions. One of Thoth's titles, Thrice Great, was translated to the Greek Trismegistos, combining both and creating Hermes Trismegistus. The name translates to Thrice Greatest, referring to his mastery over all three planes of existence. As explained in the Hermetic philosophy, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. The vice of the soul is ignorance, the virtue of the soul is knowledge. For one who knows is good and reverent and already divine. Hermes Trismegistus Hermetic means secret, esoteric, or occult. Someone who understands these laws is wise and can use them to master all three planes of existence. But there was always a few faithful souls who kept alive the flame, tending it carefully, and not allowing its light to become extinguished. And thanks to these staunch hearts and fearless minds, we have the truth still with us. But it is not found in books to any great extent. It has been passed along from master to student, from initiate to hierophant, from lips to ear. When it was written down at all, its meaning was veiled in terms of alchemy and astrology, so that only those possessing the key could read it aright. This was made necessary in order to avoid the persecution of the theologians in the Middle Ages, who fought the secret doctrine with fire and sword, stake, gibbet and cross. Even to this day, there will be found but few reliable books on the Hermetic philosophy. Although there are countless references to it in many books written on various phases of occultism, and yet the Hermetic philosophy is the only master key which will open all the doors of the occult teachings. The Kibalion Each chapter in the Kibalion is devoted to each of the seven principles or axioms that are considered to be universal laws. Don't make the mistake of thinking that it's just magic and fairy tales. The book itself goes into quite a deep rabbit hole with archangels and some such. But you shouldn't be misled by it. All the seven hermetic principles can be applied in the modern day. There really is no escaping the laws of the universe. The Kabbalion was first published in 1902, but the author's claim is that he simply just combined far older occult hermetic source texts. And then there is the character of Hermes Trismegistus himself. His origins are extremely obscure. He is the claimed author of a collection of works known as the Corpus Hermeticum, which are dated to between the 1st and the 3rd century AD. They were produced in Alexandria, then under Roman rule, and reflect the syncretism of the times of Egyptian, Greek, Roman, Christian and Gnostic thought. Most likely, they were authored by several anonymous persons in succession. Others say he is Thoth, the god of wisdom, who is said to have created himself. And then there are some who see Hermes Trismegistus as a man who was able to become divine, very much akin to the refining of the soul, 
which I will cover later. Some even think that there were multiple different Hermeses. As you can see, it can get very confusing. But let's not focus on the man or the myth, but judge the contents of the book itself by its truthfulness. The Kibalion is said to appear in your life when the time is right and you are ready to receive its teachings. When the pupil is ready to receive the truth, then will this little book come to him or she. Such is the law. The law of attraction will bring lips and ear together, pupil and book in company. So mote it be. The Kibalion. Principle number one. The principle of mentalism. The all is mind. The universe is mental. The Kibalion. Everything that exists is spirit. Matter itself is just densified spirit. Spirit is just refined matter. This is the secret of the alchemist and how to create gold out of lead. Practitioners try to turn less desirable substances into high metals like gold and silver. They believed that lead was just a lower form of gold that hadn't fully matured, so all lead had the ability to become gold. This was not done out of greed, typically. Alchemists believed that gold was a spiritually perfect metal, while lead was immature and flawed. Alchemists used the substance called the Philosopher's Stone. It was supposed to be healing and life-prolonging, and have the ability to change one metal into another. But do not get the misconception that the alchemists did not perform actual experiments with metals in an attempt to turn them into other metals using, well, magic. And they were quite successfully able to do so, at least for the masters. We mostly only hear about the pupils, as these secrets were passed down from master to pupil inside secret societies. And to join these secret societies, you had to, as an alchemist, turn lead into gold. Call it your entrance exam into the occult. Trunvalu Melchedek describes in his fascinating book, The Ancient Secrets of the Flower of Life, Volume 1, an encounter with a modern-day alchemist, who turned lead into gold in front of his own eyes. If you want to know more about that story, then I would suggest you pick up the book. It is a good read. You could, in a sense, say that this video is about alchemy, but I will make a separate video as the runtime on this one is already pushing it. All is just energy. THE ALL. The substantial reality underlying the outward manifestations and appearances which we know under the universe is spirit. The difference between the manifestation of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit results largely from varying rates of vibrations. The higher the vibration, the higher the position in the scale. The Cubalion. It is undefinable, but is considered as a universal living mind. All is mind embodies the idea that everything that happens has to be the result of a mental state that precedes it. When you think about it in a commonsensical way, then it is simply about creating things twice. That is, first having a thought or a design in your head, and then manifesting it into actual physical form in reality. Exactly what an architect does. First, it is a mental vision, constrained inside. Then, he makes his vision a reality by building the complex. Principle number two. The principle of correspondence. As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. Hermes Trismegistus. This phrase might be a bit overused, but for a good reason. It basically means that everything, 
all of the planes of existence are connected and in correspondence with each other. The macrocosm is found in the microcosm and vice versa. Solar systems, societies and life on Earth reflects the same thing on a cellular and atomic level. The universe is holographic, a fractal construction that mirrors itself on all planes. What this law means in an everyday setting is that whatever we do on the micro level, so we will do on the macro level. Even the tiniest habits influence the grand scheme of our behavior. As we do anything, so we will do everything. If you slack off in one area of your life, the others will also suffer even more. The outer world is a reflection of our inner world. The thoughts and images we hold in our consciousness begin to subconsciously manifest themselves in our external circumstances. The mind takes everything as it is. It does not distinguish the substantial from the real and begins to recreate exactly that which we focus on the most. Which I say not to cause worry, which is another trap in of itself. But since we are doing quotes, let us continue with that. We do not live in a world of dreams, but in a universe, while relative, it is real so far as our lives and actions are concerned. Our business in the universe is not to deny its existence, but to live using the laws to rise from lower to higher, living on, doing the best that we can under the circumstances arising each day, and living as far as it is possible to our biggest ideas and ideals. The true meaning of life is not known to men on this plane, if indeed to any, but the highest authorities and our own institutions teach us that we will make no mistake in living up to the best that is in us, so far as it is possible, and realizing the universal tendency in the same direction in spite of apparent evidence to the contrary. We are all on the path and the road leads ever upward with frequent resting places. The Kibalion. This principle also reflects astrology, how the planets affect our lives. Astrology is the study of the correlation between the heavenly bodies and events on earth. According to Carl Jung, our soul speaks to us through the language of images and symbols. Astrological planets are archetypical symbols. Astrology provides techniques for receiving and translating the concepts and knowledge in ways our human minds can understand. In many ways, it is a bridge connecting the many parts with the whole, the micro and the macrocosm, our conscious feelings, our conscious and unconscious mind. Some people believe the planets cause events, circumstances and feelings. Another perspective is that the planets provide a mirror or reflection, reflecting the energy below. The cosmos has eternally filled us with curiosity and awe. Through the practice of astrology, we continue to watch the nighttime sky for answers, guidance and timeless wisdom. Astrology has been the first and most universal attempt by man to find the hidden order behind or within the confusion of the earthly jungle, physical or psychological, as the case may be. Dane Rudyard That connection is not measurable via Newtonian laws of physics, which is why it is often discredited in the general population. But interestingly, it is in the field of quantum physics where the mystery of interconnectedness is spelled out. Quantum physics deals with the subatomic realm, where it appears Newtonian and even Einsteinian laws of physics don't apply. Einstein himself, who with some colleagues in 1935 proposed a theory of quantum entanglement, which in essence stated that 
Quote, the result of a measurement on one particle of an entangled quantum system can have an instantaneous effect on another particle, regardless of the distance of the two parts. An element of this thought experiment involves the concept of non-locality, where it is proposed that events occurring to entangled objects are linked, even when the events cannot communicate through space-time because space-time has the speed of light as a limiting velocity, according to Einstein's theory of relativity. How can two particles communicate faster than the speed of light? Einstein called this, quote, spooky action at a distance, and he took this mystery to his grave, never figuring out this paradox. There is much more to this story, not to elaborate on here. As others and current researchers have advanced and added to this theory. But consider this. It is known that we are literally made from stardust. As Carl Sagan had said, quite simply, we're made out of star stuff. His statement sums up the fact that the carbon, nitrogen and oxygen atoms in our bodies as well as atoms of every other heavy element were created in previous generation of stars over 4.5 billion years ago. We already are entangled with the stars, as in fact, at an atomic level, we're made of them. Principle number three, the principle of vibration. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates, the Kibalion. This principle says that everything, starting from the largest of matter down to the tiniest of particles, is a different degree of vibration. Modern science can indeed endorse that every atom and molecule is vibrating at a certain motion, speed and frequency. The combination of this energy determines the physical or substantial form of any given object. Even something that seems to be still, for example, a chair, is actually in a state of motion. Its electrons are still moving around, and there is even space between them. Nothing is at rest, not even what we would call empty space. That empty space is actually more active than Main Street in New York. So you could imagine, you see, the universe is a vast, vast system of vibrations and has infinite possibilities. All these vibrations, you know, are like the strings on a harp. And the harps that the angels are supposed to play in heaven are really this huge possibility. See, when you play the harp, you select strings. You don't play all the strings. It's stupid to just run your finger along the whole edge of the harp, back and forth, back and forth, and go... What you do is you pick out with your fingers, select less like on the piano. You don't go... You pick out certain notes, and these make the patterns. But at the same time as you pick out, you reject what you don't pick out. But it's all there, constituting a fundamental continuity, the kind of continuity of the thread as they go to the back of the woven material and make up the obverse of the pattern that's on the front. The practical application to this described as mental transportation. Change your mental state and you will change your vibration. This is done by the power of the will by deliberately concentrating on a more desirable state of mind. Whatever you focus on most in life grows. What's more, because the universe is mental and governed by the law of correspondence, changing your own mode of being influences the rest of the universe as well. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Max Planck, the originator of quantum theory, Principle number four, the principle of polarity. Everything is dual, everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites, 
like and unlike are the same, opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet, all truth but half-truth, all paradoxes may be reconciled. The Kibalion Polarity means that extreme opposites are actually different degrees of the same thing. Take a temperature for an example. Heat and cold are distinct entities or phenomena, but the same thing. Their only difference lies in the matter of degree. This same principle can also be found on the mental plane. Love and hate, fear and courage, greed and compassion are all but the varying degrees of the same thing. The difference between them gets determined by the law of vibration. Some emotions vibrate on a higher level, whereas others on a lower. To quote Alan Watts, Have you ever seen a coin that only had one side? Principle number five, the principle of rhythm. Everything flows, out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. The rhythm compensates. The Kibalion. This principle explains that there is a rhythm between every pair of opposites or poles. Rhythm is the force that enables transitions from one pole to another. After every success, there will eventually be some failure. For every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. Remembering the law of rhythm is very important for your state of happiness and well-being. If you're used to living in abundance constantly, then times of scarcity will have a much greater impact on you than someone who hasn't been as well off. Keep in mind that shit will hit the fan sooner or later. Using negative visualization or anti-positive thinking can help you prepare for that. When an eastern sage was desired by his sultan to inscribe on a ring the sentiment which, amidst the perpetual change of human affairs, was most descriptive of their real tendency, he engraved on it the words, And this too shall pass away. It is impossible to imagine a thought more truly and universally applicable to human affairs than that expressed in these memorable words, or more descriptive of the perpetual oscillation from good to evil, and from evil to good, which from the beginning of the world has been invariably characteristics of the annals of man, and so evidently flows from strange mixture of noble and generous with base and selfish inclinations which is constantly found in the children of Adam. Blackwood's Edinburgh Magazine, May 1848 It was also used in 1852 in a retelling of the fable entitled Solomon's Seal by the English poet Edward Fitzgerald. In it, a sultan requests of King Solomon a sentence that would always be true in good times or bad. Solomon responds, This too shall pass away. On September 30th, 1859, Abraham Lincoln recounted a similar story. It is said an eastern monarch once charged his wise men to invent him a sentence to be ever in view, and which should be true and appropriate in all times and situations. They presented him the words, and this too shall pass away. How much it expresses, how chastening in the hour of pride, how consoling in the depths of affliction. The key to not being negatively influenced by the harsh pendulum swing is to not get too attached to anything in life, and not to base your happiness on external objects, people or circumstances that lie outside your control. Most people can't even control their own emotions and are riding the ups and downs of a roller coaster all day. 
you should strive towards a state of consciousness that is playfully indifferent, blissful and non-attached despite the conditions you may find yourself in. The Asiatics have many words for this state. Call it Nirvana, which literally translates as blown out. Whew. The man who enjoys keenly is subject to keen suffering, while he who feels but little pain is capable of feeling but little joy. The pig suffer but little mentally and enjoys but little. He is compensated. And on the other hand, there are animals who enjoy keenly, but whose nervous organism and temperament cause them to suffer exquisite degrees of pain. And so it is with man. There are temperaments which permit but of low degrees of enjoyment and equally to low degrees of suffering, while there are others which permit the most intense enjoyment but also the most intense suffering. The rule is that the capacity for pain and pleasure in each individual or balanced. The law of compensation is in full operation here. The Kibalion. Principle number six. The principle of cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Change is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. The Kibalion. Or, as a modern-day scientist would put it, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, the third Newtonian law. There is no such thing as chance. Chance is just a term we use when the exact cause of certain effects are not recognized or perceived. Every cause has its effect, and there is an underlying law that makes it happen. If you understand the consequences of your actions, then you can choose what actions you're going to take. But in doing so, you also choose the consequences that follow. In principle, be the cause, not the effect. Be proactive, act, or be acted upon. Being the cause means that you are the master instead of the victim. This is the law of polarity. Change your polarity with the power of your mind and free will. And the seventh and final principle. Principle of gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. The Kibalion. Gender is manifested in everything. There are polar opposites, the yin and the yang. However, psychologically, both qualities exist simultaneously inside everyone. Carl Jung was one to figure this out with his anima and animus, the female and male principle in silos. The same principle can be found in other things as well. Even the brain has a left and a right hemisphere that corresponds with respectful gender traits. Gender is manifested as masculine and feminine principles across all planes. The masculine principle is the direction of giving out and expanding. Masculinity embodies yang energy, the sun and its flames that scorch the earth, but at the same time gives life to it. It is the will, the desire to achieve something and take necessary action. The feminine principle is directed towards receiving and absorbing. Femininity embodies Jin energy. The moon and the flow of water restores and soothes the burning warrior. This is the trait of creativity, spontaneity, feeling and imagination. It is said there must be a balance in these two forces. Without the feminine, the masculine is apt to act without restraint, order or reason, resulting in chaos. The feminine alone, on the other hand, 
is apt to constantly reflect and fail to actually do anything, resulting in stagnation. With both the masculine and feminine working in conjunction, there is thoughtful action that breeds success, which points out that both the feminine and the masculine fulfill each other. The Kibalion. If you've made it this far, I would like to thank you for listening. May you all be wise as serpents. Masters are ye of your destiny. Free to take or reject that will. Take ye the power. Take ye the wisdom. Shine as light among the children of men. The Emerald Tablets Thank you for listening. See you next time, mortal. Remember to hit that bell button to stay notified. Subscribe for more Red Pill content. Do give it a like if you enjoyed it, and feel free to share it. If you want to support my work, you can find me on Patreon at Library of Gnosis. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and BitChute at Library of Gnosis. The audio versions of my broadcasts are available on Spotify as a podcast at Library of Gnosis.